Hello, my name is Arina Rivo. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll show you how you can make a symmetrical triangular shawl. I like this project very much because it's very relaxing. You don't need any measuring and you can use any kind of yarn. You can use very fine yarn, fingering weight, or you can use very thick yarn and it will always turn out. It's also great for using up your leftover yarn as long as the yarn is of the same weight. Then you can mix and match different colors and you can have a very interesting design, very nice, uh, interesting color combinations. Or you can have it uh, monochromatic, like I have. Let me show you how it looks on me. Let's try it on. So this is how I wear it. And I wear it under my coat, or I can wear it on top of my jacket, like this. And also, I like to wear it like this. So if you like this shawl, if you like the style of it, then stay with me and let's see how it's made. I use about 800 yards of DK fingering weight or sock yarn. Here are the tools that I used. And these are the approximate sizes of my shawls. You can cast on anywhere between one and three stitches. Here I'm going to cast on three stitches using a long tail cast on method. Now I turn my work around and make sure that my working yarn is under the left needle tip and behind my work. And I'm going to need the first row. The first row in this case consists of three knit stitches. Now again, I turn my work around and make sure my working yarn is under the left needle tip and behind my work. Now I will start increasing and you can use any method you like. You can use KOB or yarn over, but I'll show you another way. I'm going to knit the first stitch. And then I will knit the second stitch twice. First into the stitch below, or it's called into the right loop. So I place that stitch 
onto the left needle tip, make a knit stitch and knit all the remaining stitches as knit stitches. So I have one increase. Then I turn my work around and place the working yarn under the left needle tip behind the work. And in this row, I will slip the first stitch knitwise, knit the second stitch, Tighten the first two stitches and knit the remaining stitches. Now I turn my work around and place the working yarn under the left needle tip behind the work. And at this moment I like to use a marker to remember which side is with the increases. And I'm going to make another increase. So I will need the first stitch and then knit into the stitch below into the right loop. Like this, I place the stitch on the left needle tip, just for convenience, and knit a stitch, and then work the remaining stitches as knit stitches. Again, I turn my work around, place the working yarn under the left needle tip and behind my work. And this side is without increases. I slip the first stitch knitwise, make a knit stitch, tighten a little bit the first two stitches, and work all the stitches as knit stitches. Again, turn around, place the working yarn behind the left needle tip, and this is the side with the increases, knit the first stitch, and then knit into the second stitch twice into the right loop, place on top of the left needle tip, knit stitch, and work all the remaining stitches as knit stitches. Again, turn my work around, this side is without increases, I slip the first stitch knitwise, knit the second stitch, tighten the first two stitches and work all the remaining stitches as knit stitches. Turn around. This is the side where I make increases.
first stitch is a knit stitch and then I knit into the right loop I place the stitch below onto the left needle tip knit and knit all the remaining stitches Turn around the side is without the increases I slip the first stitch knitwise knit the second stitch tighten a little bit and knit all the remaining stitches again I turn around this is the side with the marker And from time to time, I like to move my marker a little bit higher so I remember where I make my increases. So I don't have to think about it, which is very nice. So here I need the first stitch and then knit into the stitch below. I just pull it place onto the left needle tip make a knit stitch and work all the rest of the stitches as knit stitches Again, turn my work around. Slip the first stitch knitwise, knit the second stitch, tighten the first two stitches, and finish all the stitches as knit stitches. I'll just show you one more time. Knit the first stitch and then the stitch below place onto the left needle tip. Make a knit stitch. and knit all the rest of the stitches.
This is how my sample looks. The side with the increases is moderately stretchy. Cotton is not very stretchy, but when I work in wool, it's uh, quite stretchy. And the edge is defined, but it doesn't stand out too much. And that's the other side. And you can always check by folding the triangle and just checking that the sides are of the same length. Then you know that your triangle will be symmetrical. If not, you can switch to a different needle size. Just go one size up or down. And here I wanted to show you also another project. I started a shawl for my mom. That's her colors. She's a brunette, so she likes pinks, purples. And I'm checking that my triangle is symmetrical. And that's the other side. And this is a typical garter stitch edge. And this is how the tip looks like. I leave the last three stitches of the last row to shape a corner. I'm going to need three together. I first need two stitches. And then Pull the resulting stitch through the last stitch in the row. And place it back onto the right needle tip. I turn my work around. And I will need to place my working yarn behind my work. So what I will do, I will slip the first stitch of the left needle tip and move my working yarn to the back of my work and return the stitch back on the left. For binding off, I will be using an Icelandic bind off technique, a stretch version. And another good method would be a traditional chain bind off. So what I do, I insert my right needle tip, right to left into the first stitch and left to right into the second stitch. It's a little bit difficult with cotton because it doesn't stretch at all, but it's a breeze with yarn um, made of wool or any stretchy fiber. And I make a neat stitch and place it back 
on the left needle. And again I insert my right needle from right to left in the first stitch and left to right in the next. And knit a stitch. And return it back onto the left needle tip. And I make sure that I pull my work down with my left thumb and index finger so that my stitches are stretched. It's important because this edge should be very stretchy. I'm going now to shape the other corner, so I'm going to knit the last three stitches together. First, I knit two together, inserting my needle from right to left, and then I will pull the resulting stitch through the last stitch in the row. and cast off the last stitch. Next I'll show how I do it with a hook. And it's much easier with a hook, especially when you work with cotton and other non-stretchy fibers. So instead of knitting the last three stitches, I slip them onto the right needle tip. Turn my work around. I insert my hook into the three stitches and then pull the working yarn through the stitches. And also I move the working yarn behind work at the same time and return the resulting stitch onto the left needle tip. And again, it's important to keep the stitches stretched because we need this bind off row to be very, very stretchy. And I repeat the same steps as I did with the needle, only with a cord.
So I go from right to left into the first stitch and left to right into the next stitch and pull the yarn through. And keep the stitches very stretched. We need a very elastic edge here. Again, right to left, left to right, and pull the yarn through, and return onto the left needle tip. Now I'm going to shape the last corner and I'm going to knit these three together with a hook and if you started with two stitches then you probably want to do uh, two stitches together or if you started with a single stitch then you don't really need to do this at all, you can just finish the last stitch. 